We've all been there before. When your vehicle makes this sound or shows this warning, it's time for a new battery. Automobile batteries may die from time to time, but it doesn't mean the end of that battery's life. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, 99% of all lead batteries are recycled, making them the most recycled consumer good in the United States. Nearly all vehicles on the road in the United States are powered by a lead battery, and many electric vehicles contain lead batteries as well. At the end of their lives, retailers package the spent batteries they receive from customers like you and ship them to an EPA-regulated facility called a smelter. Here, the first step in the battery recycling process occurs. Once batteries arrive at the smelter, they are taken to the receiving area to be processed. The batteries are removed from pallets and are inspected to ensure only lead batteries are entering the recycling system. This safety inspection is important to identify any lithium-ion batteries that may have been packaged with lead batteries. Lithium-ion batteries pose a significant risk as they are highly flammable and can create dangerous conditions during the lead battery recycling process. The batteries are fed into an enclosed machine with rotating hammers where they are broken apart through an automated process and the acid is drained and collected. The broken bits of lead and plastic tumble into a separation tank filled with water where the lead components sink and the lighter plastic pieces float to the surface. Using these differences in density, the plastic is separated from the lead. Each material then goes through its own individual recycling process. Let's take a look at how each of these components of the spent batteries are recycled and reused. Reclaimed lead will be smelted, refined, and reused in new batteries. This amazing process recycles virtually all the lead and can be repeated indefinitely. During the smelting process, scrap lead materials enter a furnace to be reclaimed. After smelting, the lead is then further refined and additional elements are added to create alloys for the use in the manufacturing of new batteries. The newly alloyed lead now gets poured into bar-shaped molds called ingots. The bars are stacked and taken to the manufacturing plant to be reused to make active material and grids for new lead batteries. Reclaimed plastic pieces from the battery crusher are cleaned and melted in order to be used in the molding of new battery cases. The plastic, or polypropylene, is filtered and extruded into pellets, ready for the injection molding process. And finally, reclaimed acid can be purified for use in new energy storage devices. However, most reclaimed acid is chemically treated and lives on in the form of sodium sulfate. After the acid is neutralized, the sodium sulfate crystals are separated from the liquid through a distillation process. The sodium sulfate can be isolated and dried through a multi-stage process. The purified sodium sulfate can be sold for use in common household goods such as powdered laundry detergents or by the glass industry in their refining process. The remained neutralized liquid meets regulatory standards and can be safely discharged or reused in the battery manufacturing process. Now let's see how these three highly recyclable components come together to create a lead battery. Once they arrive at the plastics facility, the recycled plastic pellets are blown into an injection molding machine. The injection molder melts the pellets and uses pressure to push the liquid plastic into a metal mold. Each mold is different depending on the size and shape of the battery it will become. New cases are cooled, quality checked, and stacked for delivery to the battery assembly plant. Any cases that do not meet the quality standards are recycled, creating virtually zero waste. After arriving from the smelter, the recycled lead ingots are remelted and the liquid lead is made into battery grids. Grids are an essential part of the battery's power delivery system. The grids are then wrapped around a tube ready for the application of the active material that stores the power. Under tight computer controls, lead oxide is mixed with water and other materials to create a paste. The paste forms an active material that enables the battery to store its energy. The paste is then applied to the grids to complete the battery plates. Positive and negative plates with protective separators are grouped together into cells and inserted into recycled plastic cases, and the cells are connected together to allow the current to flow through the battery. Covers are added to complete the assembly process. The batteries are then filled with new or reclaimed acid 
and set to a holding area to be electronically charged anywhere from 30 to 60 hours. At this point, the batteries are considered fully formed and are thoroughly tested and prepared for shipment and ready to go to retailers and consumers across the country, thus starting the cycle of use and reuse all over again. It's clear just how sustainable the lead battery in your vehicle really is. Through an ingenious process of recycling and reclamation, lead batteries have become one of the most recycled products on the planet. Lead batteries used to power cars and store energy in so many applications are one of the best examples in the world of a proven environmentally conscious technology. So the next time you see this light, think about the role you play in smart energy storage decisions. To learn more about lead batteries and their recycling process, visit batterycouncil.org.